Hi, welcome back or welcome if you are new. My name is Jamie Lee. Today I wanted to do a bit of a different video. I wanted to talk about trends that I really don't like, aka things that I wish people would stop buying. Um, obviously this is going to be a little bit tongue in cheek and if you own any of these items or you personally love them, I think that is amazing. This is just my own personal preference and my own opinion. So I hope no one is offended. This is just a little bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, I did want to just throw that disclaimer out there. Um, so I'm just gonna dive right into it I'm gonna list everything down in the description box below um, along with everything I'm wearing because I'm sure I'm gonna get some questions on this cardigan which is a very good dupe for a cardigan which I've had in my closet for a few years so um, this one's a winner anyway um, one of the reasons why I really felt compelled to film a video like this is that I often feel when you are spending a lot of time online you're living in a little bit of a vacuum and it can seem like everybody is wearing certain things when really nobody actually is in real life so i'd be interested to know if you have any of these trends in your own wardrobe or how you actually personally feel about them and the first one that i want to start with is the one that confuses me the most because these are house shoes they're slippers and people are wearing them outside and i don't know why um and that is wearing ugg boots or the Birkenstock Boston slippers as outdoor shoes. Uh, this is something I've seen a lot of people in the Northern Hemisphere do, uh, on Instagram anyway, and on YouTube, and it baffles me every single time because Ugg boots in particular, so I grew up in New Zealand, I live in Australia, Ugg boots in particular are something that have always been marketed as slippers to me. My mum used to have a pair, she would replace them every single year because she literally wore them every single day but only in the house to me the construction of them the fabrication everything about a an ugg boot does not scream shoe that you go and wear outside um, maybe if you're doing a quick dash down to the supermarket you're wearing sort of leggings or your pajamas or something like that because you forgot milk and you need to make your morning coffee totally understand but with a full-on outfit with jeans not really my jam and the same goes for the Bostons from Birkenstocks. They seem to be having a real moment and I think as a house shoe they are great. They look really really comfortable. My experience with Birkenstocks is again that they are super duper comfortable but again they're a shoe that I sort of see as being a bit of a slipper as opposed to an actual outdoor shoe so yeah curious to know your thoughts on that one. <laughs> okay next one is the revival of 2000s or noughties fashion so I think these super duper mini skirts which are really being brought back by Miu Miu in particular worn very low slung on the hips with a little crop top I don't know about you but Y2K fashion definitely scarred me I can't really say that I think it was a particularly bright moment in the styling choices that I made for myself uh, and it's definitely not something that I really want to relive when I was younger I definitely wore a mini skirt but nothing that really resembled a belt per se but these days I definitely prefer something that's a little bit more modest that has a bit more coverage on the thighs so definitely not one that I'm going to be partaking in and one that I really wish would just kind of move on very quickly. <laughs> in the same vein anything low rise now this is going to be personal preference and for me as someone with a long torso low rise just does nothing for me it really does accentuate the fact and highlight the fact that I have a super long torso um, makes me look like I'm all torso and no legs so it's again a trend that I am definitely not going to be partaking in so um, that is the next trend that I really wish would go away uh, but if you love it I think embrace it go for it especially if you're someone with a shorter torso you may find that this is a trend that really actually does work for you it's just one that doesn't work for my particular body type which is why I'm already ready for it to be over <laughs> okay the next trend that I wish would go away is cutouts I feel like these only look good on models or when people are shooting street style images and they're shooting the images in a very particular way. Every single time I have tried on anything that has cut out, it always is really unflattering and it never looks right on me. And maybe that's just my proportions, but it's just, it's never the one. Um, I actually recently purchased a dress which did have some cutouts in the hopes that I could maybe make this work for me. And unfortunately, it really reinforced my opinion. I've seen lots of really weird cutouts as well. There are a couple of Australian brands that I really like, which have done these sorts of cutouts. I think the one that is kind of coming to mind or is forefront of mind is Christopher Esba. And they did a design on a skirt which actually really highlighted the belly button. And for me, that is just not the one, especially having had two kids 
now my belly button is so stretched out and it is not an area of my body that I want to focus on or highlight I actually really want to cover it up so yeah cut outs are definitely one that I'm not into unless maybe it's on the back it's a bit higher up it's a part of the body that being exposed it's not going to feel unflattering um yeah so again another trend that I will be personally avoiding <laughs> Apologies if the lighting is going a bit funny. It is a little bit of a cloudy day today um, But the next trend that I'm looking forward to being over are platform shoes And I say this as someone who got quite heavily invested in this trend about 13 years ago uh, Sort of at the rise of fashion blogging. I have my own blog I've got so much photographic evidence of me wearing platform shoes and I will insert some vintage photos on screen so you can see and There are a couple of reasons why I'm not into this trend one they are are hugely impractical and why I didn't really cotton on to this the first time around I'm not sure I think I wore them for at least two years straight before I started to kind of phase them out in favor of other shoes um, the number of times that I actually kind of fell over or my ankle buckled as a result of me stepping on something funny I couldn't even tell you and I'm really lucky I didn't actually ever twist my ankle as a result um, but also I find that they add a lot of visual weight at the bottom of your outfit they can be really heavy and clunky so in terms of actually walking you have this additional weight on your feet uh, but yeah I, I do find a lot of the platforms tend to have a contrast heel so in terms of balancing out your outfits in terms of the color schematics it can actually make that feel a little bit more on the tricky side um, also as someone who's five foot eight I don't really think I need a lot of additional height uh, I do like a little low block heel and something that's a little bit more dainty with a bit more height to it when I am going out for drinks but I don't necessarily need the height that a pair of platform shoes would give me and I'd say probably the two key brands that I've seen a lot of people talking about would be Versace and also Valentino and when I look at both of those pairs of shoes neither of them actually appeal to me in terms of the way that they look I think they're both patent as well which is not really a very comfortable option especially if you have wide feet and a bunion as well like I do so yeah safe to say that platforms are one that I'm looking forward to being on their way out if you're someone who's petite though you might actually really love this trend because it does give you that extra height that little bit of a boost that you are maybe looking for and if that's the case then I think go for it <laughs> now this next one I think really does lean in on what I was saying earlier about existing in a vacuum and it's probably just limited to online because I can't say I've really seen this in person but it is people revealing their Hermes Kelly or Hermes Birkin purchases to me this just seems so excessive they are such expensive handbags and I honestly am baffled by the number of young girls who are spending you know twenty thirty thousand dollars on a handbag uh, to me that just absolutely blows my mind maybe this is coming from someone who has two children who has a mortgage to pay so I've got other financial responsibilities and I'm thinking a lot less about splurging on something that is that expensive and I get a lot of people say you know it's an investment it's gonna go up in value and Hermes Birkins and Kelly's are probably one of the few fashion items that I would say actually could be an investment um, as you can get your money back or more but uh, for one, I think the whole Hermes game that you have to play in order to get a bag is a little bit extreme. I think if you genuinely have a lot of love for the brand, um, then it's just a natural progression as you invest more into their items and the legacy and the history of Hermes. But what I have seen is a lot of people actually going to the secondhand market and buying a pre-loved bag, spending upwards of 10k more than the actual ticket price if you were to purchase it from a boutique, uh, and yeah they just seem to be everywhere it it feels like my instagram feed is saturated with hermes birkin and kelly bags and i'm a little bit over it so that's another one that i wish would die i mean this is not to say that in my future i wouldn't ever want to have an hermes kelly or a birkin but realistically i don't think it's going to be a bag that ever happens for me and i am totally okay with that i love the bags that i've already got and i think that there are so many other beautiful options that you could add to your wardrobe without going into a lot of debt or without spending a huge chunk of your savings that could better be spent elsewhere okay next trend i think maybe is just limited to gen z but i've seen it a lot on tiktok and it is cargo pants again this is a trend i wore when i was 10 11 years old I remember having a pair of beige colored cargo pants with the pockets on the side okay they're practical I'll give you that they are a pragmatic purchase but 
they're not for me. They're not for me now. Um, I used to wear mine with a blue zip-up hoodie thing from Glassens. You know, I had a very, very small wardrobe. I think I probably had less than 20 items in my closet at that age. Uh, and that was sort of my go-to pairing with the two. Either that or I had a kind of fleecy top, which I wore with the zip-up as well um, with them. Not really wanting to relive that. It's a very TLC moment. Um, you know, it makes me think of, do they wear them in Waterfalls in the music video? can't remember but uh, to me that's kind of what they feel very reminiscent of and it's another trend that I'm really not that interested in revisiting and maybe this is just a case of what happens as you get older and I would be curious because I know a lot of you are my age or even older I would love to know how you feel about trends you wore when you were younger coming back around so please let me know in the comments and then the final trend that I really wish would go away is the three-piece suit or wearing waistcoats <laughs> uh, again personal preference this looks really great on the models um, I've seen it look good on some people when I was looking at the Australian Fashion Week images but to me it's not something I want to participate in and it's something I feel will look and also perceptibly seem dated very very quickly uh, and when I think about participating in any kind of trend for example one that I did decide to buy into was the lug sole boot trend to me it has to be something that I can foresee myself wearing for years and years to come as opposed to just for a six month period of time because that is not a wise way to be spending your money especially if you are splurging on something a bit more expensive um, so yeah that is kind of the final trend that I am really not that interested in adding to my own closet. I would love to know which trends you are really not into for the year ahead uh, and if you want to see one where I talk about trends that I actually really like then let me know in the comment section below as well. Thank you so much for watching, for spending some of your day with me as I sort of share my own personal opinions on these things. As mentioned if you love any of these trends I think that is amazing and if they work for you and you are rocking them and you feel confident in them then all the more to you. Uh, for me these are just things that I personally don't think gel with my own style and also the direction I want to take my own closet in. So thank you for being here. If you want to see more videos like this from me or you want to see more styling videos then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell if you want to receive notifications when I upload a new video and I will see you next time with a brand new one. See you very soon. Bye.